as Fabi said, this is incredibly important that this archive is collaborative and that those who are holding the camera and those who are deciding where the camera should be pointed are the community members themselves. And so I wanted to introduce Luan Iturvi and Scotchy Hill, two um, Guarani uh, filmmakers who have been um, uh, documenting the processes and docu yeah, documenting the the ceremonial hat, the processes step by step from an accompanying Silta Dio and Dona Fausta from the processes from the moment when they um, perform the first ceremonial chant to call upon the spirits and ask permission to be able to begin building the house and to be able to begin gathering the materials needed. Um, we've been accompanying them, gather, um, uh, gathering the different kinds of wood that are needed. And from um, right now, they're pausing because of the moon. The moon cycle doesn't permit building processes to take place right now. And next week, we'll begin again um, accompanying their documentation. Um, so, Scotchy, Luan, this is here. Scotchy, Scott has prepared a short video. Um, which I'll be sharing, which Yara can be sharing as well, um, that I'll be sharing here. Oh, there's Scotch, fantastic. Um, I'll play the video in the background while Scott speaks. We do you. We do you. We do you. え、じゃあ、じゃあ。あ。あぶなじゃ、パイアラカエラ。へいなじゃ、パイアラカエラ。とどぱにょもるぱがもらい。とどぱえらにょもるぱがもらい。とどぱそんぱにょもるぱれん
So the recording process of the construction of the Ogapsis has been a new experience to me. Because I've met people on the field fighting for a right. So when I started having this experience with audiovisual uh, techniques was through people who motivated me like my father who is a great movie maker and a great anthropologist. But all this process of constructing the yoga psi that I'm living right now in the sense of recording uh, this process since the beginning, since the early stages, up until the end. All the details, I have never done this before. I always came when it was the inauguration, uh, and so for me this has been something new. Uh, given all the equipment we've been using so that we are able to show in the best way possible uh, knowing that we are in a third world country and this is a world that I identify it's a world that we're trying to show the best that we can with our uh, audiovisual work and we've been trying to show you guys through the lens of a camera, through audio. So for me, this has been a very new experience. I've been discovering a lot of things. Like uh, Tadeu has mentioned before. All this process of constructing the prayer house has been a unique experience because each process that I record for myself is a unique process. So we put ideas together. I remember very well... Uh, oh, I apologize for the background noise because we are here on the field. We are fighting on the youth uh, meeting. We separated a room to talk with you. But anyways... We've been putting ideas together so that we are able to build something new in our third world, something new in the sense of for the Yanderus. And then it comes in the virtual reality goggles. I remember very well when Rafaela brought the lens, uh, <laughs> the six-eyed camera, so we were all looking at this camera and saying, Dude, how's this going to work? What can we do with this? Uh, what are the possibilities? And then we would say, okay, let's test it. Let's put a tripod on and use this. And with, within these experiences, we have been we have been putting the construction of the Ogapsis, the prayer houses of the Guarani in Kaiva. We've been trying to show in the best way possible how they are built. And this part of the video that you guys have just seen is only a small part of a big project uh, regarding cutting and processing the wood. Uh, putting it in the holes, fixating it, uh, tidying up the place. Uh, this mini clip that I've done, that you guys have just seen, is just a small part of the construction of it. There is still the part of processing bamboos, cutting bamboos. So all of these details, we have been trying to show you, uh, both in the with the reality, virtual reality goggles and the normal. Uh, so this process that we've been recording, we use cameras, and the final process 
always goes through the end the season and the rules they have to approve it in any moment they are left out of this process this process they're participating all the time in constructing this world and and me even in spite of that I have this place to speak I am an indigenous person I always ask them for their approval their input on constructing this new virtual reality together with our community and to me that's very important like Fabi was saying before because sometimes people don't even know that their pictures are being used But this happens because we didn't have this like collective construction before. And what we're doing now is this, collectively constructing this. So all of this process is something new to me. It's something, this recording process is very new to me. Uh, doing this with audios, videos, this is very new to me. Of course, I've been dealing with cameras uh, for a long time, but recording this process from beginning to end, this is very new to me. And at the same time, is a learning process to me as a youth, uh, like as a young individual. Thank you, Scott, very much. Thank you for your speech and your participation. Now I'm going to put the Luan's video. Luan is here with us. I'm I'm handing over to you, Luan, now. Yara, se puder passar também. Handing it over to you, Lua. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. I don't know what time zone you're in, but firstly, I would like to say hi to Joey and all the staff here. Thank, thank you, Jackie, Fabi, Hafa. We're always together in the field to be able to record this moment. I am a mere apprentice of the Yende season and the rules and I am little by little learning how to use this technology in our favor so so that in some way we can tell the story not only through white people but using our knowledge uh, and thank you very much Joey for supporting us up until now and for all this staff that has been supporting us and being de so dedicated uh, people who are working in the Reality Museum. And I'm very proud today to be able to present this project because we have been through some days of a very strong fight. And I've dedicated myself entirely through communication so that I can collaborate with my Guarani and Kaiva community. Uh, and I know that there's been a new generation coming in that has been able to tell the story of the Guarani in Kaiova so that our story, it's not just a mere exposition in a museum, but that's also a form of resistance that allows our story to continue over time so that you guys in other countries can know a little bit of our culture and just as Joey has witnessed inside our territory because he has been here visiting our prayer houses he has been has looked at the houses before he has witnessed our res resistance movement our mo 
or protests like we had in Brasilia before. So this communication is very important to us because it's beyond just uh, using a camera or recorder or LED light to it's more than just like a beautiful scenery or a beautiful setup background because those are the last like recordings and libraries that we have of knowledge and we don't know what may happen to them so we want to share it with you in our territory we learn new things every day we have new experiences, we learn stories, we see things happening. And me, as an indigenous person, a, a part of an indigenous youth, I'm always looking forward to learn more about my own culture and learn what I can tell people, what I can show people, and what other people could do for us. So this is why technology and the audiovisual has been very important to us. Uh, has been allowing us to record uh, the construction of the prayer houses. And this is an experience I'm going to take with me my whole life. Every time we are in the field, every detail when they're drinking terere or talking, me, Rafael, Scott, we're always there very paying a lot of attention so we don't miss uh, any movement that they do <laughs> we even have some videos I've recorded uh, with some uh, record <laughs> uh, bearing and recording the audio and seeing how we can record when they are bearing bamboos or when they're when they're sticking wood in the ground so they can build the prayer house so all these jokes all these internal jokes that we have they're very strong and I'm learning with them every day even in spite of the fact that I am an indigenous person I'm always learning and I always want to learn more with my elders and my shamans I also want to say that the Yandesi and the Yanderu, they're always praying all the time they, for us. So that nothing happen, nothing happens with us, nothing happens while we're working. They always say, oh, let's make a prayer so that nothing happens during your journey. So that, you're, so that the Jadas can follow us and be with us in all of our process. So I also want to say that Ichinomiji has added so much to our youth and has helped us tell our story. Sometimes I would text Mateus as well and he taught me something related to design and editing uh, because I, I'm always looking for learning more things. Uh, so that I can show to the best of my abilities what is happening inside our territory. So this video is just a way that we found to show you what we live every day here inside the territory. Yeah, and also so that you guys, after learning, listening to us, can tell other people, other young people or other elders what is going on with our culture. And this is what I have to say today, so thank you very much.